Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. It is an exciting day here on the homestead. We're out in the greenhouse, but not really to do greenhouse type work today. We're in the greenhouse because it is cold out. <laughs> uh, it was 17 degrees when we woke up this morning. It's a little bit warmer now. I think it's probably about 35 degrees outside, but here in the greenhouse, it's probably 70 degrees. Yeah. It is really, really nice. We're not quite ready yet to be throwing on our winter coats and our hats and gloves and doing cold weather videos outside. So we are finding refuge in the greenhouse today uh, because it is amazingly warm in here. That's one of the real perks of having a greenhouse on the homestead. Right, yeah, you can be outside. It'll be nice and warm. You feel like you're out in the sun, uh, but you don't have to deal with the winter cold. So right. anyway, we're not uh, doing greenhouse work though today. What we're actually gonna do today is we wanna talk to you guys about the type of corn that we grew this past summer. It's something we've never grown before. Uh, we've showed you guys it a few times throughout the growing season, but today we're actually going to show you kind of the, the final product of what we're gonna be doing with this corn. So we're gonna show you how well it grew, what it looks like now that it's been harvested, we're gonna take it off of the cob, grind it up, and in the end, we're gonna make some homemade cornbread with the corn that we grew in our garden this past summer. Now, for those of you who don't know, the corn we're talking about is called Danny corn. Danny corn is a variety of corn that was originated or kind of invented, I guess, mm -hmm. by our friend Danny from Deep South Homestead. If you're not a follower of their channel, I highly recommend you go check out their channel. Danny and Wanda have a lot of knowledge and they love to pass it on. But this corn, Danny corn, uh, I have to say it blew us away Absolutely. with how well it did. This is a variety of corn that Danny has developed over many, many years, uh, you know, combining different corns together, getting cross pollination to finally end up with what he calls Danny corn. Now they live in Mississippi, so their climate is quite a bit different than ours. And we really weren't sure how this Danny corn would do here in Missouri. So this year we gave it a test. You guys, look at how tall this corn is. Uh, like I said before, I'm 5'5". Five five. That is well over seven feet back here. It got so tall, it's pretty amazing. This variety is called Danny corn. It was developed by our friends Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. They live in Mississippi. They've been trialing their corn in different parts of the country. They've been sending people their corn seed to see how well it does, and it's been doing great all over the country. So this is our first growth of this. It tasseled, uh, the ears have silk, and it looks like they're being pollinated well. We'll see when it's completely done and drying how well it does. Now the corn that we grew, uh, it was not a sweet corn. It was actually a, a dry type of corn uh, called dent corn that can be used to make corn flour, corn meal, grits, and I'll be making cornbread with it today. So it's a little bit different than what we have grown in the past. Right, yeah, we've always grown sweet corn in our garden in the past, and we'll probably grow sweet corn again in the future, but this year we wanted to grow only the Danny corn because we didn't want any problems with cross-pollination. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was a pure and we wanted to make sure that we could save seed for future years. So this year, the Danny corn is the only thing that we grew. Now this corn here, we harvested from the garden about a month ago now. Uh, we pulled it off the stalk and we let them dry in the sprout house. Right. Today, we shucked several of those uh, cobs of corn so that we could show you how beautiful it is, what it looks like, and we can get on with the rest of our video. Right. Now the Danny corn comes in a variety of colors or, you know, it just kind of naturally occurs in many different colors. So we've got cobs like this that are, you know, pretty much all yellow, but just a few blue kernels. Um, we didn't end up with any cobs that were all blue, but Danny did say occasionally you will get a cob that is all blue, but we right. didn't get any like that. Uh, we did though, on the other hand, get cobs that are all red and those are absolutely gorgeous. And then we got some cobs like this that are like yellow and red striped, which are amazing as well. So it's gonna make uh, an interesting looking corn flower. Now, 
all corn is pretty much yellow when you grind it. It's mm -hmm. just kind of the outside that's a different color. So, kind of like the corn skin. Right. So you might see some like red flex. flakes or flecks when you grind it up, but for the most part, it's still going to be yellow. So we have about 10 ears that we're going to run through our corn sheller today. The corn sheller is something that I'm excited to show you guys. I've owned this for a few years now, but this is the first time since I've owned it that we've grown dry corn. So I want to show you guys how this thing works today. Now this corn sheller I got from a friend of mine named Joe. Uh, a lot of you have met Joe before in a previous video. Joe is a guy that uh, I've known now for probably five years or more. And we met originally as a, he was a customer at the farmer's market. Joe is a guy that I try to spend as much time with as I can because he has so much knowledge of the old ways of farming. He's in his 80s. Uh, he's been a farmer for most of his life. And he just has so much knowledge. He also restores old John Deere tractors and is going to start to teach me a little bit about some of the old John Deeres. So a couple of years ago when I was over at Joe's house, he had this corn sheller and he said he didn't want it or need it anymore and he asked if I wanted to buy it, so of course I did. And I've had this actually sitting in the barn for several years, but we haven't grown any dry corn or dent corn since the time that I got this from him. So this is going to be the first time that we're actually using this. Now I did run a few ears through it earlier just to make sure that everything was working correctly. But you guys, I'm so excited to show you how this works. I'm not exactly sure how old this one is. Uh, it doesn't have a name on it that I can find, but it obviously is quite old. Uh, it's made out of cast iron and it's uh, just, you know, still a workhorse. I mean, it still looks like it's going to work perfectly. So basically the way that this works, if you've never seen one of these, is you take a dry ear of corn, you put it here in the top, and then you spin this handle and it works the ear of corn down. It takes all of the kernels off the ear and then it spits the cob out this spot here so you can move on to the next one. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I sure would like to know who originally invented one of these if you guys know uh, because it's just a really cool invention. All right, we're going to run this corn through. Uh, we're going to see how much corn we can get off these. I think there's nine ears here. Let's see, two, four, six, eight nine ears of corn plus i already ran two through earlier so we'll have 11 ears and we'll see how much corn we get off these 11 ears spin our handle there it goes it takes a little bit sometimes There it goes. Missed just a couple kernels, but not many. Take those off by hand, and we'll be able to run another one through. Look at that in beautiful corn. All right, let's do this really beautiful red ear next. There it goes. Certainly isn't a hundred percent, but you guys look at that. I mean, that one got pretty much everything off of there. A really cool old tool to have. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the rest of these cobs through. Then we'll put these in a jar, take them in the house so Sarah can make us some cornbread.
Well, there's a half gallon and we still have, I bet, another quart at least left in there. Look how gorgeous that corn is. We're going to get this inside. We're going to run it through our grain mill and then we're going to make some delicious cornbread. Well, I'm excited to share with you all that those 11 corn cobs gave us three quarters of a gallon of dry corn. Now, knowing how many more cobs we have out there uh, in the sprout house that we grew, that's a lot of corn for us. And it will probably be, well, definitely more than one year of what we grew out there. So that's actually great. I also want to say, guys, welcome to my new kitchen. This is the very first cooking video uh, that I'm recording in our new kitchen in the new house. And I'm so excited to be here. So excited to start sharing cooking and baking and kitchen videos with you guys here in my new kitchen. Well, the first thing that we're going to do with this corn that we grew is we're going to grind it in a grain mill, a flour mill. And I want to share with you the grain mill that I've been using for several years. It's called a Nutramill. And uh, it does a variety of grains. I primarily use it to grind up wheat berries into wheat flour, and I use it to, to grind corn into corn flour or cornmeal. That's really what I use it for. You can use this though to grind up all kinds of other things. Uh, lots of people that I know who are gluten intolerant uh, grind their own other types of grains to make gluten-free flours. Uh, it's really versatile. It comes in two pieces here. This piece grinds it and this piece catches all of the flour. So I'm going to show you how that works and we're going to get to grinding some of this corn. First I'm going to take this lid off. It's just easier for me to have it off while I'm using it. Then we're going to connect this piece that collects the flour. We're going to connect it to uh, the grain mill grinder section, just like that. Now there's a hopper up here that you pour the grain in and you turn it on. Uh, there are a couple different sections here. I'm just going to go over real quickly the button sections. There is uh, two speeds basically, number one speed and number two speed. Number one is a stronger speed than number two. Number one you use for like smaller seeds like wheat berries and stuff and number two is for larger seeds or grain like corn. So we're going to be putting that in number two speed. And then this knob turns and that's how it's going to turn on. It gets really pretty loud. Uh, and the coarser you want it, the higher the number you um, set it at. So when I turn it on, I'm going to turn it on number three because we want more of a coarse grind for the the corn and that's actually really just what this machine works best set at to grind corn so i'm going to turn it on and then i'm going to pour the corn in and uh, we'll see how it does Now that it's done, I'm going to disconnect this and open it up and we can take a look at what it looks like. There you go. It's definitely coarser than flour. But honestly, it's a little less coarse than cornmeal, which for me, that's fine. I actually like uh, the corn flour to be more floury than uh, cornmeal-y. Okay, so that looks fantastic. It smells great. Uh, let's get started on making some cornbread. Well, we're gonna start off our cornbread recipe with greasing the pan, which I've already done with some butter. I'm just going to set it over here until we need it. And I have also preheated the oven to 400 degrees. So this is a very basic cornbread recipe. I've been using this recipe for years and years. I always love it. 
Everybody who's had it absolutely loves it. And I actually won a cornbread contest with this recipe. Now, the trick to making cornbread taste amazing is freshly ground corn. So what we did today is going to make the difference between um, a good cornbread and an amazing cornbread. OK, so it's going to be an amazing cornbread. We're gonna start off with the dry ingredients. Now, before we get started too far, I do want to let you know that I buy a lot of my ingredients that I use here on the homestead in bulk. And I do that through a company called Azure Standard. Uh, this flour is from Azure. These actually come in, this is five pounds, but it comes in 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds. Uh, and you can buy these things in bulk. I absolutely love that. I also buy um, you know, five or 10 pounds of salt at a time, 25 pounds of sugar at a time, and oil like olive oil and avocado oil, a gallon at a time. And I just do that for a lot of the ingredients that we use here on the homestead. If you're interested in bulk buying really great quality ingredients, both organic and not organic, I encourage you to check out azurestandard.com. Okay, let's get started. Very simple recipe. We're going to start off with one cup of flour. I'm using multi-purpose flour. Um, if you grind your own wheat berries, I need a little bit more. If you grind your own wheat berries, um, you would use soft white wheat berries for this. Okay. And one cup of our corn flour or cornmeal that we just ground. Put that in there. It wasn't quite level, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. We're going to add one third cup of sugar. This is evaporated cane juice. We like sweet cornbread. Not everybody does. I'm adding one third of a cup of sugar. Half a teaspoon of salt. We like to use um, pink Himalayan salt, and that's what this is here. And we're going to add one tablespoon of baking powder. Now, here in the Ozarks, it can get kind of humid, and so my baking powder sometimes gets lumpy. So I'm going to show you a little trick for that. I use a little strainer like this, and I basically sift that into the rest of my dry ingredients. See how clumpy that is? See how, how many clumps are in there? Nobody wants to bite into cornbread and bite into a big glob of baking powder. So just by uh, sifting it basically like this and pressing those down through there, it eliminates that possibility that you're gonna have a terrible bite of cornbread. Okay, those are the dry ingredients that we're gonna be using. I'm just gonna whisk that around to um, incorporate all of those ingredients and then we're gonna move on to the wet ingredients. The first of the wet ingredients are eggs and I am going to be using duck eggs. We have ducks and chickens on the homestead, both for eggs. Well, we actually have quail too, but I prefer to use duck eggs in my baking because the things that are baking, they, they puff up. They puff, they puff up bigger and a lot of chefs like to use duck eggs. And so I'm gonna be using two duck eggs. First, I'm going to crack them into just a separate bowl um, because I do want to, um, you know, mix them up a little bit before I put them into the rest of our recipe. It also gives me an opportunity to make sure that I didn't get any eggshells in there. Look at how gorgeous these duck eggs are and how humongous those yolks are. I just love duck eggs, love cooking with them, love baking with them. And we actually, Kevin and I prefer duck eggs to chicken eggs when we're eating scrambled eggs and uh, any kind of breakfast with eggs in them. So that is good enough. We can just dump those right on top of dry ingredients. We're going to add a one cup of milk. And then one quarter cup of oil. I'm using avocado oil, but you can use whatever kind of cooking oil that you choose to use. One quarter cup. Boy, 
pour that in there. Use our whisk and we are just going to mix all of that until it is well combined. This looks a little bit different than my normal cornbread batter because you can see the flecks of the different colors from our homegrown corn. All done with that. We just need to put that in our baking pan because the oven is already preheated. Just gonna pour that in this glass pan. Remember we already greased it with some butter. Okay, into the oven this goes. Look at that. New oven, I've used it already, but it's blue on the inside. That's so it's uh, very interesting. Put that in there. And we will let this bake for 20 to 25 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean from the inside um, and until it's nice and brown on the top. The cornbread is ready to come out of the oven. I peeked at it and it looks beautiful. Look at how beautiful it looks, you guys. It is gorgeous. It puffed up just like I knew it would. A lot of that has to do with the duck eggs. It is nice and golden brown. Now we're gonna let this cool a little bit and then Kevin and I are gonna come back and taste a piece for you. Well, this cornbread smells amazing. It is a cold, actually starting to snow a little bit, night outside right yeah. now, and some nice warm cornbread with melted butter on it is gonna be awesome. I told Kevin before, as I got real close to it and smelled it, smells really corny right but i mean it is cornbread but it smells but the smell, it smells I, different right. than just like the store oh, it store smells fresh it does it does it smells more kind of like sweet corn right than the cornmeal that you get from the, the store so let's go ahead and cut some i can't wait to have a piece you know we've been watching danny grow this corn for years mm -hmm. on their channel and we were very excited to get to try some this year. Here's your piece. My piece. Do you want some butter on it? Absolutely. Okay. Can't have cornbread without butter. No. Right? Actually, my favorite is butter and syrup, maple syrup. That's my favorite. That's almost like dessert. I'm going to cut mine in half. Beautiful. Okay, I am ready to try it. I can't wait any longer for the butter to melt anymore. We should have used softened butter, but whatever. It's gonna be great. All right, ready? Give it a try. Wow. Well, the flavor is incredible, you guys. It really is. It is so fresh. Yeah, I think that's the best way to explain it. Is yeah. it? It's a real fresh corn taste. And this recipe, you guys, is super moist. It's not really cakey, but it's not dry and and heavy like right. some of the other cornbreads. It's really amazing. Yeah, I really do think you guys should give this recipe a try. We haven't taken this recipe anywhere where people haven't absolutely loved it. Right, and if you have an opportunity to use fresh ground corn, whether it's whole corn that you buy from, you know, Azure Standard and grind it yourself, or whether, or you, you grow it yourself, you guys should try it. It really does make a huge difference in the flavor so you guys that's where we're going to end today's video we're so thankful to deep south homestead for sending us the corn seed all the way last winter so we could plant it this year and grow it um 
we're definitely going to grow more in the future. And you guys, give this recipe a try. And don't forget that the absolute best way that you can help our channel here is by sharing our videos on all of your social media. That helps our channel grow and it helps educate other people who may be interested in a lifestyle like we live. You guys, we just want to thank you so much for stopping by our homestead today. Take care and God bless. God bless.